still in science fiction. Uh, Thank so you. It was my pleasure. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was great, and you didn't have the mega bucks, and how you made it work is a bit of magic, I think. It was delicate. It was a lot of, a lot of planning, uh, a lot of thought. You know, the deal was, um, it wasn't just about making it realistic. It's great that it's realistic in some sort of by way of some anecdote. Sebastian and I screened the movie of Nurse's JPL on Tuesday. This is, this is a tough crowd, right? <laughs> this, is, this, is the, this is the toughest crowd. Thank you. And I guess there's part of us that was like, we like it there, and we've done, we've done our job. But there's another part where what led to such a realistic science fiction movie wasn't a fetishistic desire to say, hey, let's do real science for, 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 for something that's going to become a theatrical movie. It was more, what about a really realistic look or a really plausible look, maybe, at how first contact would be, a really plausible look at finding an alien. And, you know, it's been done in all types of dramatic ways, and our idea was, how might it happen? And I guess, like, when we were developing the script, our first call was, like, we called NASA. We were part of the Science and Entertainment Exchange, and we were like, what do you guys think of the places we might find life? Where, you know, within our lifetime. And that led us to, that was the sort of breadcrumbs that led to Now, if you actually had more money, would you, what would you do differently? Would it be, like, the creature, or would it, like, the space travel, or the set? It's weird. You know, it's, it, I, I'm thinking about this. If this were a huge studio movie, is a sort of hypothesis that confuses me. It's like they don't make movies like this. Science fiction is a different thing. It's not hard science fiction. It takes it, it, lots of liberties scientifically. It's a completely different animal. I guess as, a, as, as filmmakers, a fantasy of making the huge version of this would be great. But when you think about a movie with a fixed perspective, you know, a found footage movie, most of them have to invent a conceit. It's like this tape was left in the forest and we found this stuff. For us, if we find life, it's probably not gonna be, it's not probably not gonna come to us. So we're gonna see it just like this. We're gonna see it on fixed cameras on the spaceship and it's gonna get beamed back and it'll have happened days before and it'll just arrive. And it was like, here's a way to, approach, to take a, st a style and to take limitations and actually tell, I think the most, honest, sincere, compelling version of the story. I, I you know, have to add to that that I, I really think that cinematic language has developed through its limitations. You know, when, when you have a set of rules, that forces you to really explore how far you can push those, those rules and what you can actually do with that, you know. I think, uh, you know, in any, in any art form, you, you have, you know, your, your tools. You have your palette of colors, you have uh, the, the, the elements that you're going to be using with. I, I, I'm a strong believer that if you have uh, just a limitless amount of, of resources and, and tools, um, ultimately I think it's actually going to harm you more than it will benefit you. Mm. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you don't want to take anything to any extreme, but uh, but I do, but I do believe that this film, you know, because we, we we started out with a clear set of rules from the perspective of both. Know, being faithful to the science, the, the, the hard science, as well as how the story was going to be told through the monitoring cameras, through the, through um, you know this footage that, that that basically came back to to, to Earth, um, it it really dictated what the movie was going to to be like, and every element in the film reflects that. One of the things I really liked in your character was her enthusiasm mm. for the science and the exploration. She was an explorer. And I thought that was very realistic, that she was really, she really wanted to do this, to really go outside and explore. And I thought mm. that was a wonderful play. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, that's what drew me to the character, her passion and her love for what she, what she does. And, um, and it was interesting talking to a, a real marine biologist and going to their mind of, of how they view the world and how they, how they live their life. And, you know, uh, she said to me that she feels safer in the water with sharks and whales than with people. And all she wants to do is be in the water and exploring and, you know, and, and she was saying how, you know, one area you can explore and, and you, you, you think you got it, but then you come back and it's completely changed. So it's like a never ending search and discovery. And, 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 and so talking to her and, and reading the character, like she was, it was her first mission. She's never been in space, but she's willing to risk everything for, for research. To, it's like you, you almost there you can taste it how could you give up now how could you I'm willing to, to die for this if there's you know and, and thank you for saying that because yeah, I really really love that about her passion and 
How how was it acting in a claustrophobic type of yeah. setting, like a like a like a spaceship or in, inside the suit and all this kind of stuff? Uh, was that what, you're not claustrophobic yourself, no, right? No, 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 no. Thank God, imagine. No, uh, I want to be able to go to space. <laughs> um, it was, um, it was, it was a very, it, it, it was very interesting, and it was very, it was very helpful for the authenticity of being in the moment and mm-hmm. living the moment of of being on the ship like that. When they close the door, you can't get out, and we actually couldn't get out because we had to have somebody come in and open the door for us. So you couldn't. It's so weird. Um, the long-term collaborator of Sebastian, Eugenio Caballero, is a Oscar, who won an Oscar for Pan's Labyrinth, a world-class designer. They collaborated on building a totally realistic, NASA-approved, actual spaceship in Brooklyn with eight cameras that we actually put in, and the, the actors went in, we shut all the doors. Sebastian sits in front of a deck of eight cameras and directed by microphone, where we shot huge sequences of the movie in that way. Yeah, it's a big challenge because, on the one hand, conceptually, that it, it felt like the right way to, to shoot this film. You know, we're we're dealing with you know, 80% of the material in the film comes from, you know, from from this interior of the spaceship, which um, you know you could really get a lot out of making it a real set, a set that would work in every single direction. Um, but at the same time, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're outside, you know, I'm basically playing mission control, and it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge not to be able to actually walk up to an actor and just tell them something very specific, uh, you know, everything that you're saying, all the other actors are hearing, all the producers, everyone in the set who has headphones is, is, is listening to, and, uh, and it, it, as a director, it becomes a challenge, but at the same time, um, what you're getting, what you're obtaining, uh, in terms of what the actors are, are doing, it, it really is is, 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 is is terrific. I mean, they really are in, you know, in, in, in that moment. And you also start playing with a different set of tools. You know, suddenly, you know, the film is, is, is you, you don't have, you know, a dolly in or a camera movement that would, that would normally, um, you know, be part of your tools in another film. Here, it's, you know, when the camera breaks down and it falls apart or the position changes, then it becomes really significant. The focusing system doesn't work, but that adds more tension to, to, to everything you're going to watch through that camera from, from then on, you know. So it's, it's, it's cool suddenly discovering different tools, you know, and tools that you will only do, you will only use in this film, because any other film would not use those. <laughs> and so you said that the, 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 the ship set was NASA approved, is that what it was? Because that's what I was talking with you guys, I was saying that that was one of the things that I liked a lot about the film, was the, the uh, looks, the authentic look of, of, the, of the ship, which is most of what you heard was filmed. So. Those two guys are from NASA JPL, yeah. and we developed the whole thing with that, and SpaceX to a point, um, completely approved. Are we, who's the astronaut that came to set? Uh, Mike Massimino is, is, a, is an astronaut who, he's, uh, you know, he's done spacewalks, he's in the mm-hmm. Hubble 3D the IMAX movie film, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, he's sure. one of the protagonists <laughs> there. Okay. And uh, he came to visit to the set, you know, f- first we, we got on Skype with all the actors and him, and he told us, you know, firsthand oh, yeah. what the experience of going through a spacewalk and everything, which was... Amazing. I, I never thought I would meet personally someone who, who's actually been up there, you know. And then suddenly, you know, one day he comes to visit to the set and he's looking at all the details in the spaceship and getting actually nostalgic about, you know, how it been said up it there. resampled. All, yeah, it was very, <laughs> it was pretty accurate. And, and the thing that he said that you were saying, I remember, he said the first time he went to space, um, he felt home. When you, it's, when it's zero gravity, when you go out there and it's zero gravity, he, went, he felt like home, which is really. I thought it was very beautiful. beautiful, and he said beautiful. it was very. He's like, you get so emotional when you see the planet, and when you, it's so small. And he said he just, it's such an. So like, what happened no, to the spacecraft? Where is it? Well, we kept as many bits of it as we could. We actually tried to give it to like a science center or something <laughs> because it's like heartbreaking. But fundamentally, we dismantled it. And oh. bits of it went all over the place. I, 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 it was I, a I great wanted, ship. Yeah. I, I wanted it's Ben to start a, a bar in Brooklyn called the Spaceship. Completely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like it criminal. Been like, I mean, it was so. I mean, it was. I mean, from the outside, it was wooden. It looked like the sort of spruce goose of of, uh, of, 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 of spacecraft. But from the inside, it was absolutely as what you see in the, in the movie. What's very gratifying to me is it's a diverse cast, and I think that's very realistic. 
And also as a Latino, I have to say I'm very happy to have a Latino direct this movie. Thank you. Yeah. The first English language film. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. I'm very proud of you. I think you did a great job. Thank Aww. you very much. Let me. Let me. Let me okay. Okay. The movie is going to be the event. Oh, yes, oh, I can't tell you the place to go to. <laughs> Let me give you guys a fun question, just to wrap it up. If, uh, Na if NASA or whoever private uh, company actually do does do a space mission to Europa and they offer it to you, <laughs> would you guys go? It's a pretty big sacrifice. It would be amazing. It would be very tempting. But when you think about it, you know everything that you have to give up. I don't know if I'm built, you know, to be an astronaut. It's, yeah, it's honestly, it's, uh, you know, I that's an honest answer. <laughs> I think having this experience. Uh, I, yeah, same here. I don't know. It takes a lot of uh, courage and selflessness, and really, you know that, you, that there's a huge chance of you not coming back. <laughs> I'm gonna just go back to the JPL guys. The NASA Clipper, so the Europa Clipper mission they're hoping to do in about uh, 2021 um, is an is an unmanned JPL mission. And I, when I really asked why, it's because the radiation would kill you. If, if you went there, or at least under current technology, that's what would happen. And we actually worked around it with a bunch of theoretical technology for the movie. So I'll say, no thanks. Uh, no <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you